Welcome back. What's going on? Today we're doing a new room released in Try Hack Me. The room name is Atlas and it is about hacking a Windows machine. So throughout the room we have around 8 tasks or actually they are 7 tasks. In these 7 tasks we will be focusing on enumerating and pen testing a Windows machine. All right. Throughout the um, uh, demonstration I will be answering the questions. So Deploy the machine and let's go ahead and scan the machine first. So we're given a machine. We have to scan sudo nmap dash sv dash a uh, specify dash pm because the machine doesn't respond to ping request. And then the IP address six seven one two one. I would advise everyone, if you are new to Windows penetration testing, to start with this, with this room. This room walk, walks you through the steps taken when doing a pen testing for a Windows machine. Port scanning, enumeration, foothold, and here are how to uh, move throughout services, privilege escalation, and post exploitation. So it's very recommended for those who are starting out in Windows penetration testing. Okay. So now let's get back and see if we have the nmap scan results finished. Not yet. Let's fire up the browser because I guess we have a web server running on the machine. So let's prepare the browser tools, everything. Let me make sure that the network settings are set up correctly because sometimes I leave them connected to Purp Suite. Settings. No, nope, everything is okay. Let me try access the IP address of the machine, see how the web page looks like. Okay then, so we see now the nmap scan finished. We have two ports open, 3389 for RDB and 8080. If you take a look closely at port 8080, we see it is HTTP proxy. So we were trying to access the page at port 80, it didn't work. I guess you know the reason by now. Now if you try to access the page with port 8080, let's see what will happen. So we have basic HTTP authentication. If you read through the message, uh, blah 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 is requesting your username and password. The site says Thin VNC. Now Thin VNC is a remote. It's much like RDB, all right. It's a remote uh, support where you can log in and to, to your workstation through the browser. So, if you close this now. And we want to take a look closely at the headers. If we go to, okay, back to the terminal, open a new tab, 
and curl the page 10 10 6 7 1 2 1 so if you take a look at the response headers we see we have access denied since we didn't supply username and password and also we see thin vnc which is the name of the software as we said earlier it's a web-based virtual network computing virtual network computing much like rdb vnc allows you to access a device remotely this time it is running through the browser so what do we do now we now know we now know what are the services let's see if there is something in search in the exploit database about the service thin vnc and we have one authentication bypass um, I prefer taking a look at this through the browser but anyway let's go to Google and type thin VNC exploit let's see here authentication bypass that's the one we found okay so it is a Python exploit where you supply host port example as you can see host and port and um, the exploit is supposed to bypass give you bypass the authentication uh, challenge presented at the web browser okay that's cool now if we go back and type dash m uh, no let's get this one ls so this is the exploit here um, ls dash la examine the permissions on the exploit where is the exploit okay so let's move it mv4 into um, thin vnc exploit.py now let's run that Python thin vnc define the IP and define the port see what will happen uh, okay how about Python 3 so we got some problems in this exploit a working copy of this exploit can be found in this link so this exploit is actually based on the original one we viewed earlier at the exploit database but this one unfortunately it didn't work that's why we're gonna try this one so let's clone the repo here and type git clone okay now cd to cve so we have two directories now let's give the exploit execution permissions and then we run the exploit so we have to provide the host and port okay the host provide the IP and provide the port 8080 um, okay thin VNC credentials found username atlas password hold up the heavens so basically as you can see the exploit was able to find the credentials uh, for the basic authentication we encountered now how the exploit found them if you read through the exploit 
you see it's, it's it, it is um, uh, trying or tried to access the configuration file of the team VNC server let me uh, see where was that line so at this line as you can see so the configuration file it it has retrieved the credentials from it is thinvnc.ni and this file according to this version is vulnerable to read access by anyone that's why the exploit we are able to access the file and display the credentials for you okay so let's now take the credentials and log in through the browser username and this is the password so thin VNC, VNC machine full color connect so here we type the machine IP and we connect let's try this one and now as you can see we are connected to the machine this is the desktop of the actual machine we are pen testing so now we have some sort of first foothold right but uh, the interface of thin VNC is not comfortable so we're gonna switch to RDB before doing that let's go over the questions and answer them starting from port scanning or here completed port scanning submit the answer as comma separated list from low to high the open ports so it was 338 and it was also 8080 what service does nmap think is running on the higher of the two ports what service does nmap think is running on the higher of two ports it means this one let's see here back to the nmap scan If you look closely, it is HTTP proxy. We would usually go on to do a lot more in-depth scanning, but we will leave it at that for this introductory room. We have what we need for the time being. All right. So that these are for the port scanning. Let's go to service enumeration. Nothing to be answered. Foothold. Seems also here nothing to be answered. Oh, no. Yeah, okay. So nothing to be answered here. Just read through the descriptions of the questions. Now, let's move on through the challenge. So, now we have access, right? And we have username and password. What about if we use a more comfortable interface? If we switch the thin VNC into or the VNC access into RDB access, since we know that RDB is open on the machine, we can actually have more comfortable interface to work with. Okay, so we type, or let's leave this here and open a new tab in case we want access back to the username and password. X free RDP slash v and type in the machine ip address slash u type in the username we have them slash p the password slash cert we want to ignore the certificate warnings we don't want any problems with the certificates ignore and enable the clipboard also we want dynamic resolution and then here we want to uh, establish some sort of share from our machine to the uh, target machine in case we want to transfer files we can't do that right we need uh, we, there is no SSH there is no FTP so the only way to share files is to just um, open a share from your machine 
to the target machine through X3RDB. You can do that by specifying the drive option and type in the, the, the type of the, the name of the share. So in my case, I'm gonna name it share and the directory name in case, in my case, it's temp. I'm gonna share temp. So, right now, we have now a more comfortable access to the target machine. You can say now that we, have, we are in the first foothold. So, let's take a look at the machine, see what are our level of access. Toolbars, oh, I don't want toolbars. I'm gonna access the command prompt. And type who am I? So right now I am, okay, I want, I want to make this bigger. Font, cursor size, font. Yeah, this is way better. Okay, so we are uh, Atlas. Now our um, I don't know what to say. <laughs> our goal is to escalate to the system. So basically, Windows enumeration. There are multiple things to do in the, during in the, uh, the process of enumerating Windows and finding a way to escalate your privileges. For example, you can use Wimpy's. You can just download this one and run the tool on the machine. This machine, or the, the tool will display the various ways you can follow to escalate your privileges. You can also use a tool, another tool called Seatbelt. Seatbelt is another tool for enumerating uh, a Windows machine and finding privilege escalation vectors. Now, we're not going to do any of them because they are easy. Right? You can just download it and run it. I'm going to skip right to the method of exploiting this machine. So basically, all of you know the print spooler nightmare. So here there is an exploit. Uh, CVE 2021 1675 print nightmare. I think we covered this exploit before in one of the videos, but actually I am failing to remember which one. Um, so it's actually based on exploiting the print spooler uh, servers. So the LPE technique doesn't need to work with the remote RPC. It's only working with the functions of print spooler. The script embeds a page 64 encoded payload for a custom DLL. The script embeds methods from PowerShell power up. Okay, so what to do now? Let's clone that exploit. First, to my machine. Remember, I shared the temp directory, so if I go to temp and git clone, ls. So now I have the exploit here. Okay. So now I want to share this exploit. I want to access it through the current RDB session. Remember, we can access that through the share functionality we enabled when, when we connected using X3 RDB. So here, I'm going to close this one and run PowerShell. Again, we have to make the phone bigger so you can view everything comfortably. I think this is good. Okay, so now we have to, we want to access this the uh, this folder. So what I'm gonna do here and the type dot two backslashes and the IP address of my machine.
Okay. So the IP address of my machine is here. Okay, that's fine. And then I type the name of the share. In my case, it was only share. And then I type the name of the directory, which I would like to access from my machine. CD CVE. So there is only the PowerShell exploit. So here I want to import this. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to type only the name of the PowerShell script. So we import that this way. Enter. The network path was not found. I guess I have to type in the name here. So let me let me check on here the share name that appears from my machine. So if you go to this PC, this is the share on Kali. If you double click on that, you see these are the actual um, folders in my machine. If you if you take a look here, you see the shares on my Kali machine. They appear now on the Windows machine. So I can easily access this. Let me see the path. So TS client share TS client. All right. Let's go back uh, here. So I'm gonna type here TS client. TS client. And now let's import. We are importing the exploit right now. So what's that? Security warning. Don't run. Run once. Run once. So now we have imported the exploit. Now let's invoke it. So type invoke. Nightmare. And simple as that, the exploit is finished. So as you can see now, new username has been created with a new password, and these are the exploit files. Now what to do with these credentials? As you can see now, we can use that username and this password to start a new command prompt. So start process PowerShell, start, oh no, I forgot one single code start start now a process which is elevated command prompt dash verb specified as administrator or run as dash credential specified the credential to be the username here admin add adm one n uh, the password at W0RT. Uh, I type it. I type the password wrong. Pass. Oh, so it is uppercase. P S S W zero R D. I hope this is right. And yes. Now we have another elevated command prompt as system administrator. So now we have successfully elevated our privileges. Let's make sure that we actually elevated our privileges. Who am I? Slash groups. Who am I? Who am I? See now we are part of the Administrator's account, administrator's group, users, interactive. Yeah, most importantly, you are part of this, which means right now we are the administrator. So, at this point, you have successfully elevated your privileges and you are the administrator on the system. 
So actually we never did anything magic here. We just used public exploits, right? The machine is vulnerable to print spooler nightmare, a print spooler. And also the thin VNC servers run, was running on the browser was also vulnerable. So we only used public exploits, right? We never did anything magical here. Okay, so what is what we have to do now? What about the post exploitation? The post exploitation is where the harvest credentials from the machine after we escalate our privileges. So the most common the most common way to escalate your privileges when you are inside a Windows machine is to use Mimikatz. So we need now to import Mimikatz to the machine. If you go to Mimikatz web page, let's download now Mimikatz. Save. Let's put that at the desktop for the moment. And now we go back to our machine see where we are cd back ls so this is mimikatz ls la let's move that mv mimikatz to the temp directory why because we want to access it through the target machine cd slash temp so we have Mimikatz here. Now let's unzip the folder, uh, the file. Okay. What do we have here? Uh, Mimicom DL QE passwords. Yar. But where is the executable file? Win32, cd, win. Error 64. Let's try 64. Ah, so here it is. Now, let's switch back to the machine using the elevated command prompt. And now we will also, we will also here launch the Mimikatz, okay, from the target machine we know that uh, the uh, we have a share and we can now access the files of my machine so simply type ts client share x64 mimi cats.exe now mimi cats will run on the machine so if there is no antivirus detection, it will run safely. But there is no antivirus protection on the machine. That's why Mimikatz was able to work or was able to execute. Okay, so next step, before we dump the passwords, we want to obtain debug privileges, which allows us the debug privileges allow you to access other processes for the debugging purposes. So privilege, debug. Okay, now we want to elevate Mimikatz privileges, right? So simply, if we type token, Elevate this will take us into the system level shell with maximum privileges because that is what Needed to dump the hashes of uh, of the system Okay, I see this is now fine Authority system and we have elevated our token now next is to dump the SAM database Successfully, we dumped the SAM database. If we take a look at the output, we 
this is the administrator and this is their NTLM hash so you, you know what you want and you can take this and crack it with John the Ripper or Hashcat okay then so for now we are done with the machine let's see if there are any questions to answer so we were at step task 6 so here no questions to answer just type completed if you actually completed that what is huh, here we got one what is the administrator accounts ntlm password hash looking at the output all right so this is the hash uh, this is the cva no nope. um I'm not able to copy the hash. Uh, this is not good. It is just slipping away when I'm trying to click on it. Where was that? Um, don't tell me that I need to type that manually. One last time. Control C. So you see, I can, okay, let's do that here. Yeah, now from the VM machine to the actual Windows machine. We have one B. And that is right. Oh, we have one thing we didn't complete here. Completed, completed. Final thoughts, nothing here to find, nothing to answer. So that was today's room. I hope you find that enjoyable. And see you in the next video.